In preparation for 2023 presidential elections, the National Judicial Council has issued a new policy on political and election-related cases to courts. And the People's Democratic Party abandons zoning and throws open the presidential ticket. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Ann Nicole. The National Judicial Council has issued a new policy direction on the handling of political and election-related cases. As such, suits begin to flood Nigerian courts ahead of the 2023 general elections. The new policy issued by the NJC's meeting gives strict rules to politicians on where they should file their political and election-related cases. Announced by the NJC's Information Director, Sojuyi, the new policy also contains rules on how heads of courts and judges must handle suits that have been ruled upon by a coordinate jurisdiction. The statement said the NJC issued the new policy to prevent another wave of conflicting decisions from courts of coordinate jurisdiction. The new policy, according to the NJC, takes immediate effect. Well, joining us to discuss this is Judy Ologun. He's a legal practitioner. Thank you so much, Mr. Logun, for joining us. Sure. Great. Um, let's start by looking at all the things that have happened in uh, the judiciary, of course, with the elections over the years that has led the NJC to this position. I mean, just recently, we had two conflicting court um, 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 orders that uh, made the CJN, of course, come out to say um, this cannot happen again. Um, but then the question is, um, even though this has been put up by the NJC, how realistic, how walkable is it? And will Nigerians, including the politicians, abide by it? Yep. You know, with the experiences we have had, we expect that this time around, the Judicial Council will proceed to ensure that these laws are enforced. Because we cannot outrightly say that before now, we don't have rules and regulations that the judges are expected to follow. And the National Judicial Council remains an executive body established by the federal government, you know, in line with the provisions of section 153, Nigeria Constitution as has amended to protect the judiciary of Nigeria from the whims and caprices of the executive primary, and of course, by extension, to ensure that the judiciary functions in a way that justice is delivered to the people. And like you brilliantly mentioned earlier, we've had instances where you have cross party orders being given by courts of coordinate jurisdiction. And that is what the National Judicial Council is trying to put is talked to now. A very recent example is the fact uh, on the new Electoral Act 2022 as amended, particularly Section 84, of Section 12, that stipulates that political appointees must resign from their offices at least 30 days before the primaries. And somebody now went to court all the way in Abia State, and a judge trying to position this new uh, provision with the provisions of the constitution declared it null and void and that it should be expunged from the uh, from the new uh, amendment and of course that may be the position of the law but when you clearly try to identify that who is a political appointee and who is a civil uh, servant the constitution is also clear on that. But interestingly, the appellate court has ruled that um, that provision contravenes the fundamental human rights as we have in our constitution. But this countenance the decision of the court in Abia State by virtue of jurisdiction and the fact that the person that went to court does not have a local standard. And we call that what interest do you have to have gone to court? So you see a situation where we paint the picture of what we call forum shopping, 
going to a court where you are likely to get favor. And the National Judicial Council is rising up now to say, we will not allow it to continue. If the judiciary is entrusted with the mandate of justice, then justice should not just only be done, but clearly seem to have been done. In the words of Martin Luther King Jr., okay. he said injustice anywhere is a threat to, ju to justice everywhere, and that we are caught in an inescapable network of mutualism tied in a civil garment of destiny. So, and whatever affects all, directly affects all indirectly. So, if we allow the justice system to be derailed, definitely the impact will be felt by the society, in the health sector, in the economy, everywhere. Because what Section 15, Subsection 5 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended says, is that the state shall abolish corrupt practices and abuse of office. So, justice must be able to stand tall in our society. Mm. Talking about justice standing tall, I mean, um, just like I said, in December last year, the NJC had uh, to sanction about three high court judges after issuing conflicting court uh, decisions on political cases with the same subject matter. Now, the councils have also warned various heads of courts to put a stop to such embarrassing conducts of their judges in the various jurisdictions. But my question is, this is the season where we're going to have these suits and counter suits. Um, what are the measures? Because we, you see, I, I feel like we in this country have several laws that may have covered almost everything, but we always find a way uh, or look for loopholes. And half the time, um, you know, they're double standards. How do we, what are the measures are there that may be put in place to ensure, like you said, the enforcement or strict adherence to what the council has put out because it's okay it's all fine and dandy to put this out but what is the assurance that we will not see the same things play out that we've seen year in year out for the election cycles lovely question you know and i think i have partly answered that by saying that these rules need to be enforced by whoever is ruling them out and brilliantly the judicial council is addressing the issue of the reduction. And one of the highlights of these new rules is that any suit that the outcome, that the outcome will likely have an effect or compel persons or actions beyond the territorial jurisdiction of any state must be filed at the High Court or the Federal of the Federal Territory Abuja. So that was a stop to before the example I just gave where somebody will rush down to IBR state. Mm -hmm. And where there is a case within the exclusive jurisdiction of the Federal High Court, the deal policy says they shall be filed or received at Abuja and assigned by the Chief Judge of the Court. And it further states that all such suits within the course of action that arises in the state and the relief sought or declarations, you know, uh, within the state are uh, within the state's territory with no consequence outside the state. Mm. They shall be filed, received, or had only in that state. Mm. So you don't say that you are not satisfied with the decision of the High Court in Lagos State, for instance, and you start rushing to Oshun State. You see, so they are trying to make uh, rules and policies that will ensure that justice is actually transparent. Because, we, I mean, like all those cross experty uh, decisions that brought embarrassments recently, you know, that led to the sanctioning of some of the uh, judges. We need to prevent all this. But you see, we have laid much emphasis on ex parte order. But in the words of Justice Rose Bebo, one of the justices in the Supreme Court of Nigeria, he is of the opinion that ex parte order must remain a part and parcel of our justice system mm -hmm. due to its utility because there are certain conditions that must be met before the grant of the ex parte order. And in such situation, there is a likely irreparable or serious miscarriage of justice that will result if that order is refused. And, and what is ex parte order? An order sought and obtained without putting the other party on notice. You, you recall that recently, the governor of Central Bank rushed to court, asking the court to grant an injunction against INEC and then the Attorney General of the Federation, in respect of his intention to declare and obtain nomination form for the presidency of Nigeria. And the Honorable Justice said, no, 
this is not serious enough, put the other parties on notice. Let them come and show cause or refuse or allow me to grant the order. So justice is declared to be the umpire in the society. Mm -hmm. See, the legislative arm will make the laws, the executive arm will execute the law, and the judiciary will interpret. And when the judiciary begins to lose the confidence of the people, it's a very dangerous de development. It was Blaise Pascal. Blaise Pascal who said that justice and power must be brought together so that whatever is just may be powerful and whatever is powerful may be just. If not, we'll be creating confusion in our society. That is why we must commend the a noble intervention of National Judicial Council in ensuring that we follow the path of honor okay. trying to adjudicate in the temples of justice. I want to take you back to some, some things that um, the president had mentioned, I think, in his first tenure about, um, you know, election tribunals. Um, and, of course, I remember a lot of people argued about the manpower. Um, you know, they talked about personnel, judges to seat on these um, tribunals. Um, it, so I'm, I'm trying to understand if this is some form of, um, uh, let's say, a bridge between the election tribunal and the average court system. But again, if this is going to be just in Abuja and subject to states, depending on where the cases are, how fast can these processes be? Again, let's not forget that Maj the majority of the problems that we've had, in fact, the reason why our election calendar is the way it is right now is because of the suits and the counter suits and the cases of, you know, arising from elections. And so we now have Ekiti and Oshun and other, and we have the likes of Anambra in November of, of 2021. So uh, what is the assurance again that this would bridge all of those gaps that have already been uh, you know, created within the electoral system? Do we see uh, fast tracking of these judgments or is it just going to even slow it down further, being that the, uh, the courts in Abuja might be saddled with more and more cases than it's ever been able to handle? You know, it, it's a function of efficiency and effectiveness. And we need to look at the macro environment. Do we have the requisite infrastructure and the superstructure to support effectiveness? And when I talk about infrastructure, you talk about the facilities. Yes, yeah, fantastic. When you get to the Supreme Court in Abuja, you know, you'll be glad that you have such facilities in the country. But the story is not the same in many courts. There are courts you get to sometimes there's no electricity. And the judges or magistrates would have to struggle, you know, to sit on these cases. And you talk about the workload. I can let you know that, that even in the Supreme Court of Nigeria, uh, the courts may be dealing with cases of 2008. So there are various challenges that we can upscale. But what are we making available to support the system? And again, talking about the manpower, can we claim that we have justices, and judges and magistrates, you know, who serve in the temple of justice? that can fully concentrate on that career, that we no need to combine other businesses with what they do, mm. given the economic situation in the country. So these are some of the several issues that affect us. But these are general issues, not just in the judiciary. And that is why sometimes you find out that even members of the National Assembly that should be in the National Assembly making laws for the country are busy running after contracts and you know running after importation of goods and services to make ends meet in court, despite all the huge allowances they collect. So we need to build a system that allows people to focus on what they have been mandated to carry out. You see, and in this age of IT, it should not be a serious burden to dispense justice. I can let you know we have a lot of challenges, a lot of challenges. I mean, new judges are, you know, brought on board to support the system and you constitute this uh, tribunal when necessary. But given the fact that for many years we've had a lot of backlogs, then you must be concerned that we need to clean up the space to give room for efficiency and effectiveness. Because I must say that some judges are really working against it. I've been in a court at the time and I really commend the magistrates who was in Ogba in Lagos here 
for working under such a very harsh condition. But just because she was diligent, another magistrate would have adjourned all the cases and asked you to come back at another time hmm. because they have that discretion. So those are the issues we have in the country. We need to upscale our uh, environment, our working environment, and the mindset, the attitude to work to ensure that we deliver. And that also brings the time frame into it, knowing that whoever comes to court exactly. is in court because justice is de desired, you know. Yeah, be again, be because I, I was going to ask Maria also, Trump. I was going to ask also because you're saying an upgrade in our infrastructure, an upgrade in the working environment. And I'm looking at the time frame. The primaries for the political parties is just around the corner. And before we know it, elections will be here. Is there even time, enough time for that upscale to happen? Again, do we, and this, this question is solely for you at your own discretion, do you see the government um, in a position to do that upscaling, to make sure that it happens? And when I'm talking about the government, I'm talking about those who have been elected, um, you know, or appointed by Mr. President to oversee the judiciary. Do we see them pushing for those, uh, for those upgrades or the upscaling that you're talking about? And these changes that must be done to fast track uh, and reduce the workload, can it be done within the time that we have before the elections in itself begins? You know, you know, brilliant question. And I can let you know that in Nigeria, all things are possible. Let me bring the experience we had in the aviation sector recently, when the aviators, you know, even express intention to down to, you saw how quickly the National Assembly, you know, decided to gather to intervene and a top personality spoke to them and that was suspended because the high and mighty are afraid to travel by road because of the state of insecurity. So, but that could not be done in the case of us. So it's a matter of priority. You see, okay, let me bring another case. The uh, section four, of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended says that the National Assembly shall make laws for the peace, order, and good governance of Nigeria. And you expect diligence in that. But sometimes it drags on and on and on and on. But right now we have the amendment of the Electoral Act to accommodate statutory delegates. And we can all see the speed at which that law is being amended. So it's a matter of and whether they are, whether how well it affects them. I can let you know, after all, uh, we've had, you, you've seen how about 4 trillion naira we mobilized to, uh, to attend going to subsidy and things like that. So okay. the interest of the higher monkey and the interest of the general populace. But, but you see, the, 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 exp the explanation that you gave or the example that you gave about the aviation sector, that's more urgent and expedient for the politician. Uh, but, but then for some people, it might just be great if you know, certain things drag out in court and delay the process. So it's a win-win for certain politicians. But I really don't know where, what would make it urgent for the average politician um, other than, you know, maybe them also saying, oh, well, we're shutting down and downing tools. And I, I'm not sure that we will see that coming from the judiciary anytime soon, will we? I'm just, I'm, I use that illustration to tell you that if it is important, there will be a way to attend to it. Like they say, if there is a will, there is a way. And let me say this, as a lawyer, I know the enormous discretion that judges have in their courts. You know, I must at this point commend Justice Kayib of the National Industrial Court. You know, when that court on a particular day, we started sitting, I think around 9 a.m. and this justice did not rise until about 6 p.m. And he will tell you, I'm not just here to listen to your cases. I am judged by the number of cases I conclude. So. If, for instance, you come with frivolous excuse to waste the time of the court, he is the one that will throw out your excuses and give you a specific time frame. You have to come back to me next week, so, so, so day, to come and prove your case. Recall that recently, during the prosecution of Nandekanu, 
the uh, law enforcement agents came to court and said they could not bring Nam Dekano to court for logistic uh, reasons. I mean, the judge could have said, what is the logistic? Is it vehicle? Then go to my pool of vehicles, get to Hilo's vans, get my orderlies, and go and bring him here. So those who are in the temple of justice, they have enormous power to deliver on justice. And that is why sometimes some people suspect that, okay, maybe they are being manipulated. Let me tell you, naturally, with the crop of politicians we have in Nigeria, some of them just want to waste time yeah. and throw spanners. But when they realize that the courts will not allow any frivolity, for example, you come to court with a frivolous matter, the, the judges have the latitude to slam you with heavy damages, that, you know, they slam you with serious monetary sanction, and then next time you don't think about it. Mm. But in a situation where we are even beginning to make laws now, that if a candidate presents fraudulent uh, documents in terms of credentials, it's only another candidate that is contesting that can sue on you. So you buy some, you buy some disturbing extensions. We are even trying to water down the dictates of justice. But by and large, if we want seriousness in the judiciary, we can create that seriousness. I've been in court when the judges will say, no, I'm stepping down this case. Uh, we attend to you by 2 p.m. So go and get in touch with your other colleague, and this case must go on. I have two more adjournments for you. Don't waste the time of the court. So these are issues. But for some judges who are overwhelmed with different kinds of cases, and some lawyers also will naturally come to waste time bringing different kinds of applications. But what some judges do is to harmonize everything. I say, no, this application is not necessary in this instant case through this or I foreclose your matter. So it's a collective responsibility to ensure that we upscale the respect that is allotted to the judiciary. So okay. it's, it's, it's not just a one way traffic, but I'm saying that these are all possibilities. They are all possible if we decide to make way for it and make effectiveness the order of the, of, of, of the judiciary. How can the judiciary even, because I mean, I think the true, the litmus test in um, as to if the judiciary has changed its ways or will be serving or will be, as we always say here in Nigeria, the, the, the hope of the common person uh, is in this elections and, and the season. Um, how can the judiciary regain the trust of the average Nigerian, the public, because we're all looking, many have lost hope uh, in the judiciary. Many have pointed fingers. Many have said that they've sold themselves short, whether it be the bench or, you know, the average lawyer. We've had those concerns over time. Do we see the, the judiciary trying to right those wrongs in 2023, uh, even as they attend to issues that um, pertain to the elections in closing? The essence of justice is to help us have a sanitized society. And I have said it, you see, in the judiciary environment, we have the bench and the bar. The, the bench talks about the judges and the magistrates and the bar, the lawyers, and the bench can regulate the bar. I don't come and waste my time. I just said it, that go this way or I throw your matter out and you go elsewhere. And one of the new rules now, which is fantastic, is that if there is a decision in a court of coordinate jurisdiction, for example, you got a decision in Lagos High Court, you cannot go to Oyo on the same facts. You can only go and appeal. Some people will go and start a fresh, and that is if the judge in Oyo says, no, I've read about this case, I've heard about it in the news. Why are you before my court? I don't have time for you. Go to the court of appeal. And the court of appeal is ready to attend to it quickly. We move forward. And let me say this. Francis Bacon said, Francis Bacon said, if we do not maintain justice, justice will not maintain us. So we need to create that confidence that yes, we can get justice from the judiciary. And then, and the lawyers also can call, call themselves to order and say, no, let's help the judiciary to really gain the confidence of the people. And when you have these checks and balances and you have a very strong and effective National Judiciary, Judiciary Council trying to regulate. And they also have a penalty mandate. They can, they can penalize and call people, uh, lawyers to order. Then 
we find everyone trying to, you know, stand tall okay. in performing their assignments okay. in the temple of justice. Well, I want to say thank you. Judy Logan is a legal practitioner. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. We appreciate it. Thank you. God bless Nigeria. All right. We look forward to um, what comes out of the courts and the judiciary in the coming elections. But thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. When we come back, we will be discussing the main opposition party abandoning zoning for the 2023 elections. And of course, President Goodluck, former President Goodluck Jonathan abandoning the People's Democratic Party for the APC.